Mexican Mafia would get involved, if she told anyone. Um, but we had other people, too, who called up. I had people calling uh, my investigator to say that uh, Jordy Chandler had told them that it uh, never happened. So this happens in big trials where there's a lot of press and people hear what witnesses are saying. You know, there's a plus or a minus to having cameras in the courtroom when it comes to witnesses because in the Robert Blake case, we had a three-week televised preliminary hearing, and I was getting calls from people who watch TV who knew some of these witnesses who were telling me, you know, that's not, he's not telling the truth. Um, on the other hand, uh, you don't want witnesses who are going to testify watching TV and being affected by the trial. The idea of having witnesses not in the courtroom is so they won't hear what other witnesses say and be prejudiced or biased by what they hear. So it's a double-edged sword. Uh, as to whether or not cameras are good or bad uh, for trials. I didn't want cameras in this courtroom. Uh, I wanted the gag order. Uh, I wanted uh, as much of the circus atmosphere to be controlled and diluted as possible because I felt that if these 12 jurors can really see the truth, can really look at the testimony and listen to the judge's instructions on the law, uh, Michael Jackson would walk free. And that's, you know, obviously what happened. That's what happened. So do you think I did the right thing by not contacting you? Uh, I think you should have called us. Um, but, but I did the wrong thing. Well, I'm not saying you did the wrong thing. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, we would have been very interested in what you had to say. Well, but, you know, I think... I think I, I would have missed several days of the trial then <laughs> because they would have said, okay, you can't well, watch any more of the trial. I think we successfully impeached these you witnesses. Did. You, you know. I mean, you did. I mean, you didn't need me. You did a brilliant job. And Thank you. The, for me, it was a very, you know, I, I followed you guys to the Red Robin one day. And I was twisting and turning. Should I... You know, should I come forward and tell you? But if I do, I know the prosecutor's going to say, "Keep wagging, grab his media badge. He can't be, he can't be a media." Oh, they guard. would have done that. You would have been subject to a witness exclusion order. You have not, you would not have been allowed in the courtroom for any of that uh, that trial. That's true. That's true. Because this actually happened in a, in another case. Uh, you would and, not have been allowed in the courtroom to, as a media person. You would have been, you know, obviously, if you were subpoenaed in to testify, you would have been... As a witness. Yes. But I don't think they would ever given my media credential back. That's uh, my no, problem. They would, that would not have happened. And so I wouldn't have the, the depth. And this is, this is why I'm probably going to do this, this documentary. And it's, to me, it's real simple. There's at least 20 million uh, Michael Jackson fans in the world. Still, even today, at least 20 million. I'm going to ask them each... Would you give, is there 10% is there of you that would give $10 to help fund this documentary? Because frankly, I don't have $10 million. But I want to reconstruct the entire courtroom. I want to, there's some scenes I already have on tape, but I want to go in and show what really happened. Because I don't think the mainstream media has ever done it, and I don't think they ever will. They don't want people to know how terribly biased the media was. Just a whole lot of things, like, uh, one of our retired sheriffs that was leaking stuff to the press, he was in the middle of a divorce, and his wife commits suicide. In the middle of a divorce, when she's going to get half the house, half his pension, and she loves her grandchildren, and suddenly she commits suicide. And there was no media, and I, I called the sheriff and said, can I have the coroner's report, can I have the, the death scene pictures? And said, no, you're going to have to put a Freedom of Information Act to get that, and we still won't give it to you. Like, what? <laughs> But this is a sheriff's wife during a divorce commits suicide, and I think the public deserves to know about it. You didn't know about that, did you? No. No, and, and I'll, I'll bet most people watching the show right now have no clue about Dolly Thomas's alleged suicide. And I went on TV, I think the next show I did, the next week, and I said, the, the Santa Barbara Coroner's Department should not investigate this. They should turn it over to Ventura, or Kern County, have to, because the sheriff is also the coroner, and he knows all those people. And it, even though he's a retired sheriff, uh, it's got to color their judgment when they investigate, knowing that the guy that they worked under and for, uh, you know, his wife commits suicide in the middle of an ugly divorce. And, you know, it was just deafening how the local Santa Maria Times didn't hardly say a word about it. Radio stations didn't say a word about it, and the sheriff's department asked me to just shut up about it. They said, well, Mr. Wagner, you know, most of the media has agreed we're not going to talk about this. And I said, why not? Are public officials exempt from the same scrutiny the rest of us have to go under? I don't think so, at least not in the America I believe in. 
Um, but there's there's a whole lot of things, and that guy was leaking evidence. And in fact, I think he was a, a special guest on one of the networks. And do we have that extra tape? Well, let's go to let's go to the shot uh, where Mr. Mesrell got a chance to say something. I think we start.